morning everyone again so you might think the mrs darwin is sitting in the exact same place and wearing the exact same things that she was at the last assembly and that's very true because i'm actually recording two assemblies together um because i found one another one of my favorite stories this one is called the miller his son and the donkey and this is from aesop's fables um but it always makes me laugh when i read it so here goes Hope you enjoy it. Um, it's about thinking and listening carefully to what we're told. So quite often we need to listen not only to what other people are telling us, but to the voice of our conscience. Yeah, that bit inside your head that tells you the right thing to do, even when your friends might be telling you something different. Your friends are saying, let's go and let's go over there and do something we shouldn't and this little conscience or some people think it's something that sits on your shoulder and whispers in your ear don't do it don't do it it's the wrong thing to do we've all got a conscience um and it tells us the difference between right and wrong so we know sometimes if we do something wrong that we shouldn't do it it's called your conscience and we should really listen to it because it gives us wise advice Today's story is about a miller who was very good at doing what other people told him, but no good at all at using his common sense and listening to his conscience. One day, the miller and his son set off for market to sell their donkey. The day was sunny, the road was clear, the man and his boy felt cheerful and happy. They walked along beside the donkey, talking together. They'd not gone far when they met a group of girls laughing and giggling by the roadside. <laughs> Just look at those stupid people, said one. Walking when one of them could be riding on the donkey. Get up and ride, one of you. The miller, the boy and the donkey stopped and the man helped his son up onto the back of the donkey. Feeling well pleased with themselves, they set off again towards the market. A little further down the road, they passed a group of old men sitting on a seat at the roadside, talking over the problems of the world. You see what I mean, said one of the old men, pointing to the miller and his boy riding on the donkey. Young people, they've no respect for older people these days. Just look at that boy riding while his poor father has to walk. Get down, lad, and let the old man ride. Your legs are young enough to walk. The miller, the boy and the donkey stopped. The man helped his son down from the donkey and the son helped his father up onto the donkey's back. Feeling pleased with themselves again, they set off towards the market. A little further still along the road, they met a group of women carrying their babies and small children in their arms. Oh, well, would you believe your eyes, said one of the women. Would you just look at that? There's a selfish man, if ever I saw one, riding up there in style like a king on a carriage, whilst that poor little boy can hardly keep up. Shame on you, man, she shouted. Take the boy on the donkey's back with you, poor little lad. The miller, the boy and the donkey stopped. The man leaned down and helped his son up behind him on the donkey's back. Feeling pleased with themselves again, they set off towards the market. Soon they came to the bridge over the river. Over the other side of the bridge, they could see the brightly coloured market stalls, the tradespeople selling their wares from tables and baskets and pathways, and crowds pus pushing and jostling to get a better look at everything on sale. They hurried over to the, towards the bridge, and coming towards them was a shepherd with his sheep. That your donkey? asked the shepherd. Yes, said the miller. Then I don't think you're treated him very well, said the shepherd. He'll be worn out by the time you get him to market, carrying you too, poor animal. You do better to carry him instead of him carrying you. And the shepherd took his sheep over the bridge. You can guess. The miller, the boy and the donkey stopped. The miller by now was very good at doing what he was told. So without further ado, he and the boy hoisted the donkey onto their shoulders and walked to the marketplace. Well, the people stood and stared, then laughed and pointed and sniggered at the foolish two with a donkey on their backs between them. Have you ever seen anything so silly, they jeered, as a grown man, a boy carrying a donkey? 
At the sound of all the fuss and commotion, the poor donkey, almost frightened out of his wits, struggled and kicked to free himself. He butted the miller and kicked the sun, clattered down onto the cobblestones, splashed through the river and galloped away as fast as his legs would carry him, never to be seen again. The miller and his son stood in the marketplace looking foolish, surrounded by laughing crowds. Slowly and in silence, they turned and walked back home. In future, said the miller, I shall do what I think's right. Never mind what people say. So the miller learned his lesson and tried from then on to listen to the voice of his conscience and to do what he knew to be right. So when your friends tell you to do something, decide for yourself if it's the right thing to do or not. If we think it's right, that's fine. Go ahead and do it. If, if you think it's wrong, then be firm and say no. I can't tell you how many times I have had people in my office who've done something wrong at playtime or lunchtime. And when I say to them, well, why did you do that? Such a body told me to do it. Yeah. Think for ourselves. That's what we need to do. Listen to your conscience. And that will tell you the right thing to do. Okay, everyone. It is a funny story, though. It makes me laugh every time I read it. Just imagining that donkey on the, on the shoulders of uh, the miller and his son. Hilarious. Okay, everybody, I hope you have a lovely day. See you soon.